about RMF today. And one of the uh, common misconceptions that I see from students that have been in many of my classes is they believe that the RMF is a, uh, an exact step-by-step -step process that, that explains how to uh, go about categorizing a system, how to select the security controls, how to assess those controls, how to uh, implement them, and then at the end, how to monitor them. And all that's true. But uh, what's not true is that the, the framework does not specify exact step-by-step -step instructions for how to accomplish all of those goals. We have tasks within each of the major RMF steps, but those tasks are open to some interpretation. There is a lot of flexibility built into the framework so that an organization can define certain things that are more appropriate for what they do. If you have to support a mission or you have to uh, support what your organization's business functions are, the, there is some freedom to choose a solution that achieves the goal of the security controls but isn't actually dictated by the framework itself. And that's by design. So that the framework can be used as a reference so you can follow from the process from the very beginning all the way to the very end. But there is an expectation on the part mostly of the uh, system owner and the common control provider and other uh, officials within the organization to come to some kind of consensus as to what the controls should be, how they should be implemented, and what solutions, which technical solutions should actually be used. 